We're here at the Nanotechnology Conference. And hi, so who are you? Hi, myself, uh, Sahitya Kumar. Uh, I am from Italian Institute of Technology. I am in affiliation to University of Genoa in the, in, in the group of Dr. Teresa Pellegrino. So, today, so, what do you present here? So, I present uh, basically we work uh, on clustering of iron oxygen nanocubes for magnetic hypothermia uh, therapy. And if you see, uh, the basically, uh, the magnetic hypothermia is a method of killing cancer at the elevated temperatures of 40 to 42 degrees, uh, where the cancer cells are basically sensitive. And this method is uh, FDI approved, and most of them uh, are in clinical use for glioblastoma or some kind of solid tumors. Um, what, however, these magnetic nanoparticles, which can produce heat for killing cancer, in the, um, which are available in the, in the market, are not truly really performing good with respect to that of cubic shape iron oxygen nanocubes, which we published uh, in 2014. A paper that uh, explaining the cubic shape nanoparticles are uh, far better than uh, the spherical one. Uh, actually, there are different factors which decides uh, the performance of magnetic nanoparticles in heating, especially uh, coming to the magnetic uh, applied magnetic fields and also the properties like size, shape, and composition. And importantly, also we have to consider the arrangement of nanoparticles. Uh, so actually, uh, I mean, it was, it's a state of art like magnetosome bacteria having a linear chain iron oxygen nanocubes was studied that they perform far better than the isolated states. But we tried to fabricate this kind of linear structures for using the same building blocks here uh, to enhance the heating performance. Uh, because as I said, like arrangement improves, uh, also dictates the performance of magnetic nanoparticles in heating. So initially we started this study, clustering these iron oxygen nanocubes, the same building blocks, which are less interactive, uh, using a uh, commercially available polymer, uh, by using a micro emulsion and slow solvent evaporation technology. We can see here, uh, these are hydrophobic and this is an amphiphilic polymer. We can modulate the shapes from the single structure to the elongated structures to the three-dimensional structures uh, using the same polymer by changing the amount of polymer here. If you go, uh, if you go into the structures of magnetic properties, with respect to the isolated structures, the, uh, the one which is elongated, like the chain-like morphologies, are performing having the higher magnetic properties than those of the single one and the one, uh, the structures which are three-dimensional, which are having more than four nanoparticles per structure. This is because when the particles are in elongated state, because of uh, when they are in elongated shape, uh, you can see they have a dipolar interaction and the anisotropy increases. And because of that reason, this uh, magnetic momentum behaves in a elongated entity and responds quickly to the magnet. That's the reason why the elongated structures behave far better than the isolated one and the three-dimensional structures. So what does it mean? Can you detect them? Or are you detecting things? Or are you affecting something? What are you doing? Exactly. Because I said like in the, in the beginning, these magnetic nanoparticles have the properties of producing heat with res uh, with in response to the mag uh, alternating magnetic fields that we apply externally. When we inject these particles into the cancer cells, when we apply these magnetic fields, these uh, because of the flip of the nanoparticles inside the cancer cells or the magnetic momentum spin, they dissipate heat and then they create apoptosis to the cancer cells and they kills the cancer cells. This is the basic concept of magnetic hypothermia. So are, are you able to, to do this in real people or is it then in a where? Uh, in a lab? Actually, this procedure was actually approved by FDA uh, for glioblastoma in practice. But still there is a lot of uh, room to explore uh, uh, explore uh, the methodologies to improve the heating performance of nanoparticles even at the low doses because the, uh, the, the current the clinical applications lead, needs the injection of a lot of doses of the nanoparticles into the target site which is not really recommended because that is associated with uh, toxicity issues. So we are finding a way to reduce the dose the strategies to reduce the dose and improve the magnetic hypothermia properties as well. So this hypothermia, uh, basically, are you burning the cancer out? Exactly. You, you're making something, some parts of it too hot and it just disappears? It disappears, yes. So this is what we are ki killing uh, the cancer cells at the elevated temperatures of 40 to 42 degrees because beyond that, even uh, the healthy tissue could 
uh, undergo necrosis, which is not really recommended. How do you um, how do you heat heat it up in there? Okay, uh, so there are plenty of works in the in the literature saying that uh, we can modify these nanoparticles uh, with some target ligands, which is specific to the specific cancer, and they can reach directly to the cancer cells, targeting the specific cancer cells, and they internalize to the cancer cells, and they can dissipate heat when you apply the magnetic fields from it, from inside the cell. So, or even the extracellular environment covering the cancer cells. So um, your work is to do all this. Uh, what is this? This is your paper. What do you call yeah, poster? Actually, yeah, this is uh, this is our poster. Of course, this was published in ACS. Uh, it was developed by uh, Dina Nicholas, and of course, I was also uh, involved in this project uh, as, a, as an author. And I am presenting this as a poster in this in this conference. Yes. And what's next? Uh, we are going. We are trying to go for in vitro and in vivo studies on this, and uh, I want. We want to do some kind of improvements in this studies because since these particles are less interactive, we want to also extend this study for high interactive, high highly performing iron oxygen nanocubes as well. Yes. So, um, is the vision here that this this solves? potentially some types of cancer or what does it do? So we would say uh, there is a lot of way to go and a lot of things because you know that uh, when we go to in vivo experiments uh, we have to consider various kind of parameters because especially the say coming to the safety point of view of the patient as well. Uh, I would say Yes, this is potential way because if you are combining with studies saying if you are combining this therapy with the chemotherapy, so effective at least for the in vivo, uh, in vitro point of view. Next stage, there is immense, immense amount of work to be done uh, to reach the potentiality to the in vivo and the clinical level. For sure. And how this how fast can it get? Uh, this is a, a good question, uh, but the, the, the point is there are a lot of parameters one we have to adjust uh, in this point of view, uh, especially applying um, uh, the magnetic fields because we, have to, we, we should have a proper material that could respond even at the biological limit of magnetic response. Uh, Do you have it, this material, or are you looking for it? There are some materials which are performing, but there is not clinically approved yet. Uh, uh, this kind of high performing, but there's a lot of people working on in this direction as well, yes. And you are, we are also, I mean, going to do it? Yes, even my, my, my boss, right, she's like Teresa Pellegrino, she's intensively working on this kind of uh, area of uh, studies, yes.